Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing Sonic Adventure. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we started off Knuckles' story and we were told by Eggman that Sonic was collecting Master Emerald pieces. Now, in this episode, last time I said we were going to start off with a Sonic fight but I forgot because I didn't have my notes with me that there's actually a level we have to do before then. But now I've got my notes on me, so I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, first off, forgot another thing. I always forget to do this whenever I'm playing through this game, but you don't actually want to go in there yet. You want to head over by Tails' workshop, but you don't want to go up the stairs. You just want to walk around here because there's actually a cave over there that you might not have known existed if you have only played Sonic and Tails' story up to this point and didn't do too much exploring. So, we get locked in here, and there's some... there's an upgrade over here. You've got the Shovel Claw. Now you can dig through dirt and stone. Press the jump and action buttons simultaneously. So now we can dig. Yeah! So you can use that to just like try to get a bunch of rings out of the ground, but more importantly, there are some spots like this one where there's Eggman's logo, I guess, like floating out of the ground. And so what you want to do is stand at top where it's coming out of and you just want to dig and you'll usually get something. This was the monkey destruction switch and if you saw Sonic Story, then you'll know that we, we're going to have to need this to get into our next level, which is not Ice Cap, because Sonic's currently an Ice Cap. We want to go through another level that's on Angel Island. We're gonna head over to... Ooh, I forget the name, is it Red Mountain? Yeah, Red Mountain. So, we blew up that monkey, and now we can go in there, but there's a couple things I want to mention. First of all, well, there's one thing I want to mention outside of the level. First of all, I don't know why I'm saying first of all, as if there's multiple things. The thing I want to mention is that if you go over here, down somewhere, exactly where, is it not in this version of the game? Because I'm not seeing it. Whatever, I don't need, <laughs> whatever, I don't need to collect it to talk about it. There's these collectibles called emblems in this game, at least I believe that's what we're, they're called. And there's a bunch of them hidden all around the maps. I believe they're just in the uh, the overworld maps, the adventure st or not adventure stages. What are the whatever the overworld stages are called? And there's also ones that you get if you complete a mission in a level. And there's a bunch of them. There's like hundreds, I think. And what do you get for completing? What do you get for 100%ing all of the emblems? Absolutely nothing. For, as a prize for completing all of the, getting all of the emblems, you get the knowledge that you got all of the emblems. <laughs> but yeah, in the DX version, you actually got to place Metal Sonic, and you got to replace him in Sonic Story. But in the classic uh, Dreamcast version, there's nothing like that. That's one thing that I actually think they improved in the Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. Anyways, enough of my rambling, let's get into the level. Red Mountain. So this might take a little while, but this might actually be pretty short because um, earlier I played through this game by myself, like on my own, and I beat this level in 37 seconds. <laughs> it probably won't be as fast as this, but I'll probably be able to do this pretty quickly. While I'm hunting for emeralds, one thing that I wanted to note is that, for some reason, during Knuckles' story, when you enter Speed Highway, 
In the DX version, here's one thing that I think the DX version doesn't do well, is when you enter Speed Highway in the Dreamcast version, it's the, the building you enter is the same building that you uh, egg enter in at the end of Sonic's story, or not at the end of Sonic's story, at the end of Sonic's version of that level. So it's like a fun little thing, but for some reason in the DX version they changed it, just for no reason. It's weird. There are a few good, weird, there are a few weird changes like that throughout the game. And like I said, there's that one video that I linked to in the first episode that shows all of the different changes. I keep not seeing where the where Takal is going whenever she says this way. This way. Okay, so it's over here. Fun fact, uh, for Knuckles, I believe there was originally intended to be an uppercut move that you could use to attack enemies, but it was scrapped pretty early in development. <laughs> Good enough. So now I'm actually going to do what I promised we would do in the previous episode. We're going to head on over and fight Sonic. You know what, I feel like it's not as fun whenever I'm spoiling what we're about to do next in each of the stories, so I'm just going to cut that out for now. Same place as usual. And interestingly enough, uh, we see Sonic and Tails over there already, and we get Knuckles' perspective, which is incredibly different from Sonic and Tails' perspective. Now we're fighting Sonic, which I think is a pretty cool thing. It makes sense since, you know, we're doing different perspectives. I like how, in each of the stories, it makes the... whoever you're playing as seem right, because... Well, I'll get to it in a second. Oh, jeez! Oh no, the Chaos Emerald! I'll 
making me dirty. Now we're fighting Chaos 4 again. My personal grievances with this fight is that it's just very long. You're just jumping around, waiting. And with the other bosses where it was just jumping around and waiting, you didn't have to wait too long between each thing. Like, you'd maybe get like one or two attacks. But other than that, you'd pretty much just wait for a couple seconds and then start attacking. But with this, he just swims around for a bit, does whatever he wants, and then finally comes to the surface. I'm getting pretty lucky with the timing now, because he's coming up a lot earlier than I expected he would, so it looks like I'm just complaining about nothing, but sometimes this fight can go on just for what feels like forever. Anyways, as I was saying earlier, I like how in each of these stories, it makes your player character, like whoever you're playing as, seem like they're more in the right because you know as more people think back on a memory they're gonna try to think of themselves doing the right thing and the person they're going against in the wrong and I just think that's really cool I like the way that they characterize their well, characters in this game Fun fact, did you know that uh, via hacking, you can play as both T-Call and Eggman in this game? I just thought it was pretty funny because especially with Eggman, it looks really goofy. Finally... Oh, he doesn't stick his head out of the water. Come on. Come on. No, he... Whenever he does that thing where the lights of the Chaos Emeralds stick out of him, that means he's in the middle of an attack and you can't attack him at that moment. So this is, you can see why I'm sometimes impatient with this fight, because it feels like it's just incredibly long. But thankfully we won't ever have to fight him again. Unless I come back to this Let's Play in like 10 years and decide to remake it, but... So now we're seeing what Knuckles was doing when he said he had some business to take care of. We want to head over to the forest over here that contains the Lost World. I don't even think we've gone here normally yet. Previously we were brought here by uh, when in Sonic's story when he, after the egg carrier crashed he came here to fight Eggman, went to Lost World and then went to Final Egg and fought Eggman for the last time. But, yeah, here's how you get to it normally. The reason I'm crawling over here is, as you can see, there's uh, an upgrade right over here. Now you've got fighting gloves. To store up power, hold down the action button. Now you can do the maximum heat knuckles attack.
Subtitles were a bit late on that last line, but you charge up power, and it can sometimes be a bit weird. I don't know if I can actually do it without any enemies nearby. We'll just have to see when we actually find some creatures we can defeat. Now you want to head back over to the entrance because there's something there that we want to grab. So, I remember as a kid, Tikal appears in two places in the forest and she gives the same thing, she gives the same piece of advice each time. Stone statues, the door to the past. And as a kid, th that hint was really unhelpful because this first stone statue is given to you pretty easily, but the second one is a bit tougher to find if you don't know where to look. So it's just like, that's not a hint at all to call. I know there's a second one, just where do I find it? But the way that you find it is you want to insert this golden key, and then facing this direction, you want to head right. And then follow this path until you reach the entrance to a small, I don't know if hallway is the correct way to describe it. It's like a naturally made hallway. I don't know if there's a word for that. But you just want to go through here and there's another one of these things where there's something floating out of the ground so you want to dig and you get stone key number two. I keep switching between calling them statues and stone keys but to be fair they're called both in the game so cut me some slack. Now that we've got both keys in place, well, I actually haven't got it. Now that we have both keys in place, we just want to wait here for a bit, and we just fall into there, and wait for the level to start. There we go. Lost World, Stage 4. This one can also be pretty quick, depending on where the emerald placements are. I think there's actually an emerald in here. There might there's a common spot up here. Nope, not in there. Or not up there. There's the Oh. I think I saw I think yeah, pink is the is the closest you can get. I guess I'll dig here. Maybe red is the most... Yeah, I guess red is the highest one and pink is the second highest. I always thought it was the other way around. Strange. The second one will probably be found... Let's see. Probably in this corner over here. Maybe it's in this guy. Nope. I'll call him just in case, though. Maybe it's up this wall here. While I'm looking for these emeralds, let me just... I know this certainly is, isn't the best setting to talk about summer vacations, especially since, you know, there actually is like a beach level that would probably be better, but I forgot to talk about this during my visit to that level, and our next visit to that level isn't until a few stories from now, so I thought I'd just talk about this here. Uh, I just want to know, here's like a sort of question for you guys that you can answer down in the comments. What is your favorite summer vacation? What was your favorite summer vacation from school? And why was it your favorite summer vacation? Because personally for me, I can think of two. My first one is this one where when I was younger, I want to say I was like nine or so, maybe ten at the absolute oldest, but I was being babysat by one of my older cousins who was like 16, 17 at the time, and I remember that I was being babysat by my cousin and there were a, a few other of my cousins who were also being babysat because they were around my age, 
And I just remember having a lot of fun during that summer. There were a lot of activities that we did. And I remember playing some video games with some of my cousins. Uh, that summer is actually the reason why I have a strong affinity for the... I haven't talked about talked about this, but I have a strong affinity, I think that's the right word, for the classic game uh, Dig Dug. It's this old game, I forget exactly which system it was for, the Atari or something like that. But I remember, during that summer, oh, hey, I'll talk about that memory in a second. <laughs> Good enough. Where am I? This is very strange. I beg of you, hear me now. My father is coming here soon, and I fear what may happen. You must take everyone away from here. Oh, please! So, are you saying you can't leave this place? I understand. Let me talk to my father again. There must be a better way to do this. I won't let you down. I must do something quickly. back in front of the altar. This is beginning to blow my mind. Wait a minute, I remember. The broken pieces of the Master Emerald. I have to restore them to where they belong. Complete. I need to find the remaining pieces, wherever they are. Hey, look, it's Eggman's flying fortress. That's where the rest of the pieces must be. I don't know where that ship is. Hey, isn't that one of Eggman's robots? I know. I'll follow it back to Eggman's base. Here I come, Eggman. Unfortunately, they cut off Gamma's theme before it gets really, really good. That song is really good, so I'd suggest you guys look it up in the soundtrack. But anyways, I'll finish my Dig Dug story in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and, like I just said, finish up that story. But also, we're going to follow Gamma over to the Egg Carrier and see if we could find the remaining pieces of the Master Emerald. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!
I've got to get this island airborne again. 